Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cougar City Podcast. Today, we are sitting with JPY, MFQ Genocide, and Bob and Weaving 11. And I am Cougars Bay, and we are talking about Necrom. The Necrom update with the PTS patch notes that just dropped on PCNA and PCEU. And Bob is going to start us off with what do you think about this Necron update and how Sauce has been doing stuff lately? Uh, well, I think Sauce is heading down the right path of getting out of the yearly kind their yearly kind of rotation that were that they were doing. Um, it was cool the first first time, the first couple of times they did it, but it you know it starts to wear on on the player a little bit. You kind of like there's no excitement because you already know what's coming basically. Um, you know. So I like that they're they're changing their uh, their pattern up, but Necrom specifically, I'm super excited to go back to the City of the Dead. Um, it's uh, you know it, it holds nostalgia for me. Um, it, it's a great place, and then we get to um, go visit one of these Daedric princes that not all about taking over Nern and, and ruling ruling Nern and, and doing all that kind of stuff, but he isn't necessarily good, but he's not necessarily bad. He's kind of in the middle. Know, knowledge is knowledge is knowledge, right? But if you take too much of his knowledge, then uh, he uh, he melts your, your he melts your brain. Or, or brain <laughs> <can't answer>. mm, <laughs> so, kind of it's kind of cool, um, and you know just the just the way the the visuals that they showed the brief visuals that they showed the city just uh, you know all the feelings of, of playing it the first time rush back um in the other you know Elder Scrolls games that it was in so um it, it's it's just a cool place to go um and it's kind of a neutral place uh, i don't know if you caught that it's a neutral place for the three alliance uh three alliances so um you know, all the elves can bring their dead to Necrom. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. Um, and then, obviously, we get a new class, Arcanist. Uh, you know, everybody's been talking, oh, spell, you know, the spell crafting uh, aspect, right? Everybody wants mm -hmm. spell crafting. Um, JP and I have talked, a, you know, a little bit about this. It wouldn't surprise me because they make reference to pulling out your book like a cookbook to spice up your spells so it wouldn't surprise me if we have some kind of quest line to uh increase the power of your spells or change a little little you know a little twist on the spell that you're that you're going to get to cast um whether it be you know defensive or offensive um or buff or debuff type type of spell so I, i'm interested to see where that goes um it looks interesting. This whole combo situation, I think, is going to appeal to a lot of um, higher end players. Not that the lower, not that you know, new players or lower skilled type players can't can't do a, an arcanist. Uh, but I think the whole combo session, uh, combo thing uh, with combat, is going to be a very skilled thing. Uh, you're going to have extra timers to keep track of and when to cast the skill so that it's at its peak, um, you know, height of damage or whatever, uh, you know, whatever the spell does. So I think I think that's really cool. Um, and this PTS cycle is, is also interesting. Uh, they didn't do a ton. They're messing with light attacks a little bit. With a, They raised the cap. Um, but it looks like, for the most part, light attacks are light attacks. Uh, you know, the the top end players aren't losing. I think, I think what one hundred or two hundred yeah. from the from the logs that I've seen. That they're, yeah. they're really not losing much. Um, but it raises the floor for the folks that are a little bit less skilled. Uh, they are less we, optimized. Yes. Groups yeah. To like yep. hit the the maximum like coefficient. I, I read somewhere it was around like. Yeah. I don't know. Like you're gonna be lower. You're not gonna have to have those gaudy like support buff numbers to hit the the ceiling with your light attack damage. Right. So I think it's gonna let those those groups that aren't fully optimized feel a little bit stronger inside content. So 
you know, it is that balancing act, that razor edge that Sauce is trying to have accessibility for the new player, but don't make it so accessible that, you know, there's no, you know, real reward for being an expert at your class or at your at, at your role. So it, it's it's tough. But we'll have to see how PTS goes. Um, yeah, this is just I, the first I'm not week. Even talk about yeah, I'm not even gonna talk about the dizzying swing thing with Berserk. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. I think it's getting crazy at the moment. Yeah, I think that's and on the DK chain. The DK chain yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Like with their chain. I think with their chain. Yeah, but I think that DK chain the one the morph that does that is the one that pulls the DKs to the target. So I think that's yeah. gonna be more of a PvP thing than a PvE thing. No. You don't think so? They're saying no, no. I, I it's drop your uh your your venom breath. Mm-hmm. I believe, or, or one of those like off the bar. I mean, you still have engulfing. I think that's what the drop was, and then you use that in your rotation. And uh, it's actually because it's it's a ten second buff, mm-hmm. so you'd want to keep your berserk up for like recasting that essentially every ten seconds. Well, that's like where you would be recasting breath. Like what is it like fifteen or twenty? So you're actually getting more casts on your front bar with your seething stacks. So you actually have a, a higher ratio of like. In power whips from some of the like early like parses right mm-hmm. now you can see like whip damage is really high and yeah the 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 light attack damage which is usually, like third or fourth like it's down in the middle of the pack now for like as far as like dps wise like on a on a parse but we'll see now there it, it'll be part of the rotation if it sticks like mm-hmm. d- give dk's more power because <laughs> they're not any... strong enough <clears throat> Yeah, it's not any worse than Stampede. I mean, you're going to be pulled into the boss just like you would on a Stampede, Stampede again. Yeah, so. well, I mean, there's there's certain situations where, like, you don't you don't want to be as close to the boss, you know, with everybody else there. That's 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 what I was saying. Um, but mm-hmm. no, like, actually, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense where, well, you know. Think about Inferno back bars, too. Yeah. Like, uh, like, dude, you'll have a gap closer on your Inferno back bar set up and not have to use Stampede, which is kind of nice, too. Yeah. And they're on, like, the same time. They'll be on, like, the same timer as, like, your uh, your wall. Yeah, if you wall. Launch, like, yeah. Actually, so it'll line up nice. I just thought about it. Like, that's actually pretty decent for Voss, too, because after you kite, you can actually get chained back to the boss. You know? Yeah, or move across. Yeah. To, like, or I mean, to, you're to, ranged anyway. Yeah, but but you, you know what I'm saying, you know, after you kite, let's say you're in position three, um, like move in a little bit, gain chain back to the boss and like start your your whole shenanigans over again. So that I mean I think I, like it. I think that would be cool, but I like it because it, it does require a little more thinking. Like mm-hmm. as far as like parse wise, like DPS wise. Yeah. You know, do you remember when like two H got really popular and mm-hmm. people were just like afraid of it like i'm not gonna do it was the same argument. it was the same like, yeah when, yeah when two h's you can't be running into the boss like that and blah blah like <laughs> i remember all that nonsense and i'm sure there's still people in the game that still haven't adjusted to that i see it all the time they don't even they just uh, refuse to like use a two h on the back bar uh, which is fine but... i was gonna say you you nuked yourself last night bka yeah yeah yeah, but th- that's that's one of the situations where you know maybe like a staff, um, you know the the wall is just a little bit better than than stampede, um, you know we've we've talked if if I was to take my group, um, you know like JP and I like the chill team in there, if we were to take the group there, I would probably want wall in that fight because it's just a little bit better than than stampede for the second floor in fall grave in hard mode. Um, but I mean, like, it really depends. Every group has their, their own, you know, way. No, I agree. Like, so. like a wall, a big, like every, <clears throat> every spot, every yeah. position can pretty much hit every other position. Exactly. Like wall, even wall spam. Like what mm-hmm. is, Stampede isn't do, Stampede's a dead skill in that situation. Yeah, it is. So it is. is. Uh, so is Carve pretty Exactly. Much. Yep. Yeah, so. no, it was like instinctive for me, muscle memory to like. You know attack or whatever and i literally like and cross and die <laughs> and um whenever i did dawnbringer in in that situation i actually um we had a shield in our bar but with you guys running that um that mythic you know the 30 percent block mitigation that's just gonna be 
Like, you really don't need that anymore, so... No, you don't need the shield. <clears throat> so. You don't even need the carb... Like, the idea was the carb shield. Yeah, but you don't even need that. Of, you don't need it, dude. Yeah. Now with Bracing Anchor and that, it's 50% so. block mitigation between yeah. the two things at once, plus Blade Cloak is, like... Yeah, it's super, super OP. Strong. Yeah, yeah we're, I no. mean, like I said, it's it really depends on the situation and each group's, you know, ability to, to like, go into a specific fight and what they want to do as a group. Um, and I like the fact that nowadays, like, there's different ways to do, um, you know, the same fight. You can still have, you know, the 2H in that fight. It's just you're probably going to want to focus a little bit more on the bubbles instead of, like, being able to AOE them down. So, but anybody can, can do um, more than, you know... <clears throat> approach the same fight in, in i mean the best ways. i can do now is throw it as eruption and like throw some flames of oblivion maybe a breath of it if the person's close but having a wall to spam yeah like well like i said it, it really depends you know like the comp of the of the groups and such and i really do like the fact that um you know that we have the different groups that have uh different things that can can set up and such and it's still like doable so i can't wait to train <clears throat> myself into death if it goes live <laughs> <laughs> um i mean i'm i'm very happy about the fact that um that the cinemax you know with the pts they they've actually like kind of listened to players i i think they have because they didn't change much and um they understood that the light attack thing was you know, not necessarily the best for the overall community so they're kind of tinkering with it um <clears throat> trying to see the right balance between you know being able to cater to the people that are um you know new players and still like learning to weave and then have the old players as well so it's it's pretty nice so but Jen, what do you, what do you think about this new update? I am excited. As Bob was saying, I'm he was talking a little bit about the lore and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I quested the area, so I had done the um, quest line that brought you through and introduced you to Hermaeus Mora in uh, in the game. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of fun doing that. So I'm looking forward to going back and interacting with him again. Um, they've definitely changed the look of him from like our first introduction in uh, in ESO um, in ESO questline when you in when you encounter him he's just kind of like a black smoke with like a bunch of like glowing eyes. Mm -hmm. Now they've definitely really filled him out, so I'm interested to uh, to see um, see him and go go to his realm. Uh, for the new class, I would have like ate my shirt if if I had bet on like what the announcement was going to be because a couple years back, I remember watching a stream where like they flat out said like, no, a new class will not be coming. We don't have the ability to do this. We don't like the game can't handle a new class. Like we're not adding that in. And so I was watching all the videos beforehand saying like everybody was theorizing saying it was spell crafting that was coming i was like yeah that's got to be it like it it fits with like if if that's something they had in the past single players they already have the mechanics for it all they got to do is bring it in and that sounds like something that's going to be doable so when they announced a new class i was just kind of like jaw on the floor being like oh my god i'm excited <laughs> um I feel like it might have a few issues when it starts because I know in the past when they've introduced a new class, it's been like the pretty strong character. For example, when the Necro and the Warden came, it was like not well balanced. So that might be an issue. Um, but I main healers, so I'm definitely going to make one and see see what it does in healing class. And and I look forward to it. it the, the animations look great that they showed us so far. The skills look interesting. So... It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be making uh, one as well to heal. <clears throat> to kind of see, like... Because the Warden, when it first came out, and even the Necro, when it first came out, like, um, especially the Necro, a lot of people were very um, scared to make a healer Necro because they didn't know what to do, necessarily. Mm -hmm. 
um, the warden was a little bit different because <clears throat> it was it was a different style of healing from when it was before, you know, with the Templar. And, you know, even a Sork um, healer, like, it was a different style as far as, you know, when the Warden class came out. But yeah. we knew that the healing was very possible, and a lot of people tweaked and, you know, with the healings and such, they were tweaking with it more than when Necros um, came out. But I'm very excited. And, I mean, the overpower gen, they gotta, it's Cinemax, they gotta sell um they Absolutely. gotta sell and i don't stuff. i don't doubt that it's, it's so uh, and, and that mainly comes when it's like pvp it's like yeah. it's gonna be a really strong strong tune like wardens when they first came out they were unkillable in pvp like yeah. i remember playing in south of sill i think at the time and the imp on red was a warden and it took like a zerg of people to kill her yeah i mean every every time there's a new class or you know an, like oak and soul when it first came out new mythic that is tied to like the new zone <clears throat> that you have to buy the new chapter they're always gonna buff it a little bit um it's a good marketing strategy because Absolutely, they yeah. they have to sell content and mm -hmm. i don't blame them i don't blame them at all for this um i i agree they they need to they need to do that yep it generates excitement people exactly. want to play it they want to come back to the game to play it like Absolutely. The <clears throat> chapter is going to fly off the shelves, and I feel like a lot of the people that quit in 35 are going to come back for this. Um, I don't know so. if everybody will. Um, I think there's going to be a good amount of people that come back to see what the game is like nowadays. Um, I can tell you that if it was spellcrafting, more people would have come back. But because uh, that's, you know, a new element to the game, in my opinion that uh would I mean, would bring coming back though i mean like a lot of the end game raiding teams mm -hmm. left yes um i feel like spell crafting would have been kind of a system where like like scrying like you would have had to like find leads and travel the world and find the piece and add it to your fragments and it would have been kind of like a a reason to go back to the zones mm -hmm. which was kind of what they were leading to yeah um but with a new character and the classes you can play with it like oh and they've been fixing the balancing that they did in 35. I feel like that's going to bring back a lot of the end game readers that quit. So like we've been seeing and we talked about in the past about how when you hug some raids, like the, the quality of players has really gone down. Mm -hmm. um, people that aren't as experienced <clears throat> and we're helping them out as best as we can when, when we can. But uh, you really don't get those like pickup groups anymore that are like all right let's let's clear this dlc trial and everybody knows what they're doing and the burn is good you know mm -hmm. no i i definitely agree with you on that um i was talking yeah. about overall like because there's people that have left that are we're not necessarily the end game um community but just mm -hmm. overall they got tired with the game um and i feel yep. like that new concept was gonna bring um overall it was gonna bring more people back then arcane i mean i'm not gonna say there's not gonna be people coming back absolutely 100 percent. there's gonna be people coming back in and floods <laughs> but um yeah yeah because 35 yeah. really like hit the end game community hard yeah. and people were just like i'm tired of this i'm tired of like these changes but those those are mainly the players that like had reached the top of their play skill mm -hmm. and said okay, I'm tired of, like, having my game messed with and I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I really do think that there's still some um, some things that people have to to get used to. Like, JPY has been saying all along, people take so long to to get, update, um, to update, you know, yeah. to update their, their gameplay. And that's one thing that, um, you know, our team has been very good at is, you know, updating the gameplay as the content comes out being flexible yeah. <clears throat> being very flexible um to to get the maximum output out of our group that we can but um jp so what do you, what has you excited about necron well i mean as a as a as a dps main like honestly like the combo system with the arcanist mm -hmm. i think it's going to be really fun because that's the thing, that's what everyone loves about ESO's combat anyways, the interaction, yes. the light attacking, and that's why people were upset, right? Because, like, you nerfed my light attacks, and 
you've taken my skill set away. It's like I got pretty good at this and now I don't it doesn't feel as rewarding. But I have a feeling that class as a DPS and who knows, I mean my my real question about the classes and um you know, I started playing like during elsewhere, so like I I knew when like the Necros came out and they were really strong and that's about it. Like Stam Crows when they were like insane like i did my homework before i started playing the game and my first tune like coming back to the game was uh was a necro was a stam crow so um i get that they're going to be like really strong my question is is are they going to be really strong in all three roles or will it just be will they shine in one role and what role do they shine in are they are they op healers are they op tanks or are they op dps and the selfish dps guy in me wants them to be op dps because <laughs> It's a re it seems like a rewarding <laughs> well it just seems like a rewarding fulfilling like play style like really and yeah. you know back to what to touch on what you guys were saying about it being overpowered or whatever in the beginning I don't know why I hear so much like negativity towards it and it's kind of silly really in my opinion I like, agree. I'm a paying customer like I, I'm buying the chapter I want new content it's like saying like oh I'm gonna buy a 2025 like corvette and oh no it shouldn't go faster than the the, the 2023 corvette you know what i mean like, exactly like, that's you're paying money for the newest thing like it you should get your money's worth it's Absolutely, not a bad yeah. thing and honestly if you, think about it, hard. Yeah. if you think about if you think about this though what's easier to balance like what's less likely to break the game i would argue that an overpowered class is if it's in one specific role because like when oaken soul came out it broke everything every class every tune right yeah exactly. that's really hard to dial it back but like just and and just dial back the you could die it's easier to just dial back one class versus dial back an item that literally everyone has right so i i'm excited for the the new combat style of like combat i'm sure it's gonna be i hope it's not clunky i hope it feels like rewarding you know like it, it, it almost will supplement that skill that they, that that rewarding feel from light attack weaving maybe you know it, it feels good to like do it i'm looking really really forward to it i mean we're getting a brand new like this is new for like eso so i hope it is rewarding and i i i hope it is op and i hope you're rewarded for being good on it you know and i'm sure there'll be people that aren't and they're gonna cry about it and those are the people that are running around like i don't know doing heavy attack sork builds like <laughs> Hey, I was yeah, I was fun. doing that last though. night. Well, no, I do that for I, the memes. <laughs> so no, it's fine. I get it. Like if I under, I, I'm it's not it's it. I'm this just, it's so boring though. I told you my concern. It is my concern so boring. About people that only learn yeah, how that's to like, how people play that play, build. Let them play. Like no, no absolutely, absolutely. It's not for everybody, and it is for some. But <laughs> no, I, it's, I don't have a problem with it. I love it actually. Pugging now, like you can get through stuff with like random exactly. Pugs. I'm just saying, you still should learn other things like you no know, that would be my advice like to somebody that wants to play heavy attack sork you know maybe they're lower cp they're just getting into that like beginning in game vet trial stuff um sure like run it like see the content but under the print like you have to understand though under the condition that it probably won't be like that forever and yeah <laughs> And or or they'll it. just who knows the next trial work. it it may be a really hard dps check like in the next trial who knows and mm -hmm. you know it just doesn't cut it dps wise now you're going to have someone that like literally you know only knew the game in game heavy attacking and they're not going to have that skill set that they may need down the road so i mean i would still if i were in that situation and i didn't have the skill set that i had and i wanted to play a heavy attack sork i would still be out there like learning how to light attack weave properly and and do a, you know a more complex rotation i mean oaken's cool because like you can practice for people they can get their front bar down like really good and the timing and stuff and you can gradually add on to it i guess what i'm saying is like people that do that should should still continue to like try to progress themselves as like dps beyond that because there is more to it don't and and i wouldn't lean heavily into it or you're going to be very disappointed and i don't want to hear any of those people like crying when they nerf like sergeants or they nerf some of the sets or they decide that lightning ticks don't count or whatever they, they it only takes one thing they only, yeah or they change the seat they nerf that heavy attack cp whatever and you know now you're only doing like you know 80k or something on it and a bunch of people are going to cry about it and like i don't want to hear it because i'm telling you you should be like a well well-rounded like player and learn how to do like 
everything if you're a DPS. There's so much more than just, like, let me get on my Sork and run around and, like, heavy attack with my lightning. And I get people like you who want to do it as a meme, dude. Like, <laughs> it's totally, like, It's so though. funny, you, though. You've established, you've established that skill set, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Already. Well, but. I was, uh, <laughs> sorry, about before, just one last thing before, um, like, last night, Jen and I were in a VSS together, and I literally, like, while we were fighting the fire boss, I was like, oh my god, this is so boring. Like, you're literally doing two skills and a heavy attack. Like, that's going from a necro. Like, I've played my necro for for a few patches now. To that, it's just so boring. <laughs> Absolutely horrific boring for me. But uh, go ahead, Bob. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, I, not that I'm disagreeing necessarily with with what JP is saying, it, but it's it's a nice entry point for people who mm -hmm. want to move yep. from normal stuff to that stuff. And it's a great tool for them to not be focused on keeping up with a bunch of timers and light attack weaving and, and oh my God, I, I missed this and oh geez, my wall hasn't been down for the last 20 seconds. I'm, you know, my berserker glyph hasn't been up you know, because I'm paying attention to mechanics, right? So yeah. it, it, it's that nice entry point where people can go, okay, I have a heavy attack, and like you said, two skills, maybe a third skill, or a shield or something, mm -hmm. and I can just, what's the boss doing? Okay, the boss is doing this. When does that happen? I don't know if people are doing that, but that would be my mindset if I was coming into a game and trying to learn, okay, at this health percent, the boss does this. At this health percent, we got to go and do this. And, you know, and then once you have all those mechanics down, like JP said, you know, if you want to then, it, a lot of people won't. You know, 90% of the community is not going to want to progress and go score push or trifecta push or, or whatever. They just want to clear and then they're, they're done. So I think... I think the heavy attack build allows a lot of people to to do that as a as an entry point, and then if you, the people who want to continue to learn and continue to get better, I think will. Um, but it's not going to be the vast majority of folks. It, it's that's still all back. my point is. Don't lean too heavily into it. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, because like, JP's right. <clears throat> one one little thing, um, you know, whether it be a nerf or something doesn't do the same thing mm -hmm. or whatnot it just kills it it kills it maybe not completely but like sometimes we have seen where it kills it 100 percent. and um i mean they're they're doing really good damage like the the top end of the sork is 90 to 95k dps on the on mm -hmm. the dps dummy which is absolutely you amazing 100. you can do over 100 you can do like 103 so really good um, no, I'm I'm just talking about for like the average player, like ninety to ninety five is what I've seen people get. Um, yeah, if you're a really good player, I'm sure you can do one one hundred three, one hundred four, one hundred five. Um, but um, for for the the people that are actually doing that, the the top end of the average players are gonna be you know the ninety to ninety five k, uh, maybe ninety five k to a hundred um, in a way. And I mean that's that's fine and all, but like remember. <laughs> one nerf to that and you're back to maybe 75 60k and then oh, no, yeah. and there's some content that can be done at that don't get me wrong like i think any four man dungeon um you know even some dlc's hard mode can be done at that but there's some that there's dps checks and you just need to do better than 65k so <clears throat> that's well it doesn't have the burst either yeah you can't like sometimes you need to burst and add down quickly or whatever and it's yeah like uh it's ship right good. it's yeah, good it yeah ramps up you don't have a spammable that you can just lay a dot and mm -hmm. spam and burst yeah. or uh well, that's what i noticed <clears throat> just from playing with them like they they can't but it's really good steady like aoe damage and oh absolutely absolutely i mean that's that's one thing that i've learned um and i mean it's it's a decent it's a decent starting point that's for sure and you do learn the the one bar setup you know like to kind of like half of your rotation in a way um and once you learn the other half then i mean you're pretty much there 
I'm telling you what, I'd rather play it with a heavy attack sort or console bill than somebody who sits in the back on, on a dungeon on a night blade and cloak light attack. Cloak, oh, yeah. Lethal, lethal arrow, cloak light attack. Yeah, that's that's what JV was and, saying. And they, do, he, they do their five. They do their five k DPS. He he, uh, he said he'd rather play with them than you know the the people that yeah. he was paired up before. I mean, you guys love pugging, and it does make you a better um better DPS and overall player. I agree, but damn. Whew, sometimes those pugs are a little bit rough. I mean, it's it's worse on PC. When I when I went and started playing, like half my time on PC, half half of the time on PS4, you could tell. And some of those pugs on PC are just it's bad. It's like really really bad because they don't have voice chat, so like you have to explain everything in text chat. And there's some people in you know like just how they learn and such. Um, it's a little bit easier to explain things to them over, you know, voice than to explain things in, in text. Um, and then there's some people that are, are better at, at explaining things in text than in voice or, uh, vice versa. So it, it can create a, a learning, you know, disability for, for people over there. That's, that's one of the things that I saw that I did not like on PC. It's just how much like people are pugs and they're really bad pugs but <clears throat> i mean it is what it is uh hopefully those guys will get better at the game and and see what happens i mean we should never spend two hours in depths of malatar um i'm a regular vet <laughs> and that's that's what happened one day with me and i was like oh never again <laughs> never again um as far as uh pts do you think that there's any changes that will be made? And what are those changes? Uh, we'll start with Bob. Uh, the shield and the sword is OPAF right now. Uh, the, the way that they changed it scaling-wise, mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to cause issues in PvP. Um, PvE, I don't mind it. Whatever, give me a, give me the biggest shield, that, you know that I that I can I can have. Um, battle spirit. That's what battle spirit's yeah. intention is. But and they don't even use battle spirits. Yep. Exactly. So it, it's a little rough. Um, uh, you know, my uh, my buddy Zynote has been doing some PTS testing on his one bar Sork tank, his Bobby build. You can get a 32k shield out of that thing. Oh my god. That's awesome. <laughs> why, why block? Why block? Yeah. You don't need, you don't you don't need, need to block. block. <laughs> oh man. Um, so I, I think that'll get toned down a little bit. Um, I'm hoping that they tone down the the dizzing swing or the uppercut. I, I forget which morph it is that, that gives the, the berserk. Um, I hope they tone that down on, down because they're the for the classes that have a spammable. If that becomes stronger than the class spammable, you're you know, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe four years ago, everybody just ran fighter guild skills yeah. on their bar, right? Yeah, and you didn't have a whole lot of class skills, and I don't want to go back to that. You know, why run a templar if you're just going to run a bunch of weapon skills type of thing, um, in, or any class. For that matter, but um, I understand. You know, they got to make some changes. They got to make some tweaks, and and I, I think that will come down probably. Um, I don't know what they'll do to it, but I don't know if that's going to make it live. Maybe it will. Um, but overall, um, the PTS. I, I like I like what's coming out of the PTS overall. Those those are really the only two things that, that I'm real worried about. So uh, what about you, JP? Same question what uh what do you think is staying what do you think has changed um yeah i i agree with bob with like the um with the 2h change um it just you know the idea is you know there shouldn't i mean they're trying to make everything even and balanced but like i don't know i i I, I'm a fan of class like identity very much, or just you know, 
put uh put major berserk on like jabs <laughs> like, wasn't it on there at one point didn't they have it at some point? i don't know bob would probably know this uh no, bob do you I remember, remember. It, the the stand morph doesn't have berserk but it has a uh it has the the uh savage the major savage oh, brutality. Oh, okay. no, brutality. Uh, brutality it gives you your 20 percent increase the damage so you, you um and then it used to give minor resolve as well and it used to snare like it, it jabs were op as uh, op stupid skill for a very long time they've taken yeah. some of that away it still gives the brutality they should um, put it on templars they should get their jabs back with that <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah and then the pvpers would uh say you know so screw you sauce <laughs> the other the other thing I'm kind of like disappointed about is that that new set, the Ruin Carvers like Blaze, mm -hmm. um, where you get an extra fire burning tick like um, every third like dot. Yeah. Um, but it's not. It only it it procs once, so you know the way it was worded, it seemed like I've read a little bit about it, people testing it right now. It's it, the way it was worded. It seemed like every time a dot ticks, every third tick, you know, you're gonna get it. But it, it, that's it. You just get that proc. So you don't. It's pretty much like I know a lot of people. I, I was like really excited about it at first, but I guess in testing, it's it's pretty not good. <laughs> you know, you just get the one extra like dot proc, and then that's all you get. It's not like a continual thing, like or it refreshes with like dot ticks or anything like that. So, um. I was like really excited to have like a new set to play with, but I kind of hope I kind of wish that would get buff, go like or they would make changes to it because that's just like absolutely dead. Like I don't know. I think there's just too many irrelevant like dungeon sets in this mm -hmm. game, and I think there could be more. Uh, you know, I know it's hard to balance them and keep them all close, but I don't know. Just I'm tired of like I'm stale on like the the Nern, the pillar of Nern stuff, and like just personally like it's just like what other stuff can i can i mess with or, or, or experiment with and essentially that's like spell crafting right like your theory crafting like yeah exactly or, or whatever yeah i think if they just like i don't know focused on and tried to like i mean because it's a cool set um or idea it's something like unique but um i guess like it's not performing like a lot of people thought it would and um it's pretty much like a dead set you know and that's all we need in ESO is more dead sets, right? Because there's not enough of them in the game. So I would like to see, like, maybe that gets changed a little bit. Um, there's something else, too. Um, I, I, I like the pearls, the pearls of Effinity mm -hmm. or whatever, the mythic change. I think that's, like, a really good, like, I'm excited about that. I think that just, like, making it more accessible, you know, when you're... Um, you know, it, it starts gives you three ulti when you're below fifty percent resource, um, which you know. It happens. I think that makes, it happens. Yeah, quite no, a that's bit, a lot. Actually. That's a lot. It's a lot more user friendly. You know, instead of being at thirty percent resource, and I don't know, I'm definitely gonna try it on a DPS, <laughs> on a DPS like ulti build. Um, I mean, why not? We used to dump mag dump for Bashai, you know, yeah. down to like thirty and start the fight and with your pot and maintain it. So like. On, on certain classes where like you know in particular like night blade or or on certain uh races like khajiit where you don't need kill it, it's definitely an interesting like idea and i look really forward i hope i hope that stays the same don't don't change it zoss like i can't wait to try to run that on my like khajiit night blade <laughs> oh, and God. Ulti, ulti 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 yeah ulti. that not only that but then jen has you know the drag star cases shenanigans there's some pots too. yeah i want my rotation to be like uh bow proc meteor because bow proc meteor like i want like seriously like i don't know the stuff like that's like fun it's fun to like i wish there were more sets that like you could synergize more for i mean we do but it would be cool if um you had like dual sets like with support and dps um where like if the healer had one half of like their five piece and then your five piece and if you're in the group together it, it creates like you get extra stat lines because you're playing with that person or whatever or vice mm -hmm. versa tank healer it'd be cool to have like combo sets like two class like specific things i think that would be like really interesting because i like to synergize with my teammates that's why i play mmos 
like it's I, I love the the teamwork and the strategy like I know you can play this game solo player but I mean it's literally an MMO like it's yeah. not an RPG like yeah. it's cool that you can do that but but yeah. you you're playing with other people yeah. so well Jen what what about you what what are some changes that uh you like that you want them to stick and what are some that uh you don't want to stick around um <clears throat> When it comes to the current patch notes, I don't follow. I don't follow until it's pretty much like the week before go time mm -hmm. because too much changes. Um, the one thing I would like to see, though, is I want some healing love. The The healing has been a struggle since the changes. Um, it's causing us to work a lot harder to wear sets that give us increased healing. Um going back to maybe like the one second timer could help or maybe like bumping up the values for the heals I don't know which would be better uh, but in harder content it's definitely a struggle yeah I mean the, the well JP and Bob have have seen that uh, firsthand yeah. um, I mean we haven't seen it just yet because we're in VHoff doing uh, TikTok but uh, even in VDSR like the you can feel it and before the um before the nerfs when vdsr was there you still felt the healing be a little bit sus in the last boss um during the blades so i mean it's i i understand and i mean the pts the the good guys adjusted though yeah adjusted. absolutely absolutely like we can adjust but it would be nice to get just a little bit more love. I agree with Jen. Yeah, um, because like healers have really become um, expected to be like a a group support. Like we've got other mm -hmm. things to be doing, our sets to be proccing. It was it was easier to do that before when you could lay your hots and like you know as long as you were on your rotation of keeping your everything up, people were okay. You know. But the hots alone now just aren't cutting it, so there's a lot of incoming damage that you actually have to like really work through and be a healer, and it makes it harder to be the group support when when you've got to pump out the heals instead. It's it's very expensive, it's time consuming, and it's more fun playing the support where you're like adding like. Uh, roaring opportunist or pillager or something to the group doing something else besides like keeping your hots down oh I, I know all about that yeah. <laughs> I know all yeah. about that like, healing by itself is boring it's it's I, you like at getting that added responsibility but when the healing is like weakened it's you're working harder to keep the heals going yeah I have a sneaky feeling the arcanist is gonna I feel like that all part of that change in the master plan i feel like a healing arcanist or maybe a dps arcanist or a tank like is gonna supplement some of that lack of healing or whatever through some sort of support ability like a group shield or a damage redu i think i have a feeling i mean gonna, like, if... i feel like they did it on, and it was all intentional to like make room for this new class so i to something. be honest yeah i could see that because look at what happened when pillager was brought into the picture you know, everybody's like, oh, they nerfed our DPS, blah, blah, blah. But really, was it? Was it a nerf? Um, it was a buff. Uh, you just have to learn how to use Pillager correctly in the group. And if or, you, or tilt. You know, they lowered crit chance yeah. lines. Remember that you said yeah. like 860 crit lines, and then they lowered it and brought tilt in because <clears> if they didn't, like, people would be sitting at, like, 90% or crit, cap, yeah. crit chance capped with, like, kilt. And, so... Like, so I don't know. I, think it, maybe I mean, if that's the it. case, yeah, you're not wrong there. The lower could be because something's happening. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, no, I mean, we had to suffer for you know three months or four, five, eight months, however long it's been, will be until the Arcanus comes out. But I mean, they always make room. It, they they nerfed like they literally nerfed crit lines on crit chance lines on like every piece of gear right when the kilt came out. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a feeling like I don't know like I, that goes back to what i said before like which role is it gonna thrive at the most i guarantee it's gonna be super op in one of the roles like for sure and then it'll probably be okay in the other ones as well but you know it may it may do that supplement that extra that lack of healing 
and it's like you're gonna i mean it would make sense right we need an arcane you're gonna be like okay uh anyone have an arcanist looking for arcanist like it's gonna create like that whatever which is kind of it's kind of bad but in a way i mean i don't know it's it's gonna happen like you need an arcanist in your group or whatever to do certain content because of the whatever the way that something unique that the class provides it's also I can, to incentivize people to I can level see them it. up and play the chapter I, yeah i, I can know, see it theory that i have i mean it makes sense if if they're still like if they're keeping up with what they've done before like it really does make a lot of sense for that to be the case yeah all the big picture so yeah, yeah. um and i mean if that's the case then you know definitely that would be the love that we've been asking jen you know the little bit of love that uh mm -hmm. that we want so like if that's how it is if that's how it comes i'm all for it like please bring it so we can you know focus on things that we can better um comp the group as far as you know like the just the skills and the the sets we're proccing and such um i do like the the we won't see this until the, the end of the year, but the endless dungeon thing. Um, one thing that I wanted to say about this uh, in this podcast, and it's until we know more about it, we won't really go in depth. But um, I really do wish they have some cool things that drop out of that that could benefit just the overall um, community in ESO. Not just end gamers, not just PVPers, not just like housing nuts, but like something that everybody could benefit from. So, um, we'll we'll get more on that, um, during when whenever they release more information about it. But uh, one thing that um, a couple of guild announcements that I wanted to to give out. We have um, we have two new members in the chill team. Uh, Jeeves and Soap have been uh, added to the chill team. So, congrats, guys! Welcome to the team. And um, one new person added to the Turbo team was Ivory. She auditioned to be a tank, and uh, she's been doing really well in DPS wise. Um, also, the other people that have tried out to to be in the tank position for turbo um it was lori and hades you guys did a really good job i know jp was talking about that the other day how like it takes a lot to to go after a role like that um so that's you know it's it's pretty awesome that you guys tried that um and you know kind of made a leap so and <clears throat> another shout out um definitely to the turbo team leaders and mrs p starve and crack they've been doing really well with that team and they're just starting to to you know basically get their their i don't know i don't know how to say it their gen on i'm gonna say gen because <laughs> when she gets into to a certain state she starts vibing like last night. <laughs> That's, they're, yeah, they're gelling. They're gelling. The chemistry. Yeah, they're they're having good time. Um, there's a lot of players in that team that started out as like very scared PVEers that were very casual, and have now grown into um, you know very early end gamers, and I'm very very proud of that team and you know what the leaders in that team have accomplished with those set of players. So I just like to, to say, hey, guys, you know, you're doing a really good job. Um, I hope you guys succeed as fast as you guys are succeeding, because eventually, like, you're going to you're going to see the rewards reap pretty fast if you guys keep working that hard in that team. Uh, so I'm, I'm very, very happy that team is doing well. Uh, another team that's that's happening is the. Um, the, the normal trial teams, but <clears throat> that's more of a gear farm. And, you know, if you guys want to go on on that, Saturdays and Sundays at 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, we have links on Discord to, to sign up. Um, next Saturday and Sunday, I think they are doing um, normal Dread Sale and normal Cloud Rest. So if that's something you're interested in, if you need some gear out <clears throat> if you're just starting the end game and want to to farm some gear that is the perfect way to start 
because there's no experience necessary and the CP doesn't matter. So if you are interested in that, make sure you guys sign up on Discord and um, check out our <clears throat> Discord boosting. You can't boost anymore on Discord, but um, you can definitely uh, see some of the peeps that have boosted our Discord. And I mean, that's that's pretty much it. Do um, you guys have anything else you want to say to to the Cougar City Guild guys? Mm. I don't know. Well, I want to say, um, go ahead. No, you go. <laughs> I was going to build on what Cougar said. I was like, um, happy to hear that the uh, the Turbo team is uh, gelling together and really starting to like build that group synergy. That's that's where it gets good and and uh, just keeps blossoming from there. So congrats and keep it up. And JP. No, I. I think you covered it. Okay. All right. Well, thanks guys for watching. Uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe to our channel. And uh, if you really like to, to hear more of us, then uh, definitely turn on the notifications. We're here every month. And uh, yeah, we just talk about the current situation in ESO and what we think and what you could, uh, um, I guess, get with, the thoughts on our minds um what what it's cool and all but uh thank you guys for watching and have a good day